Welcome. Great to see you. Great to see you. So happy that you are here. Uh, I feel so blessed uh, that I am with you today. And for those of you who are meeting here, me here for the first time, I'm Mazuki, your host for this evening's interview session. We'll be starting the uh, live event in just four minutes' time. So. I hope that you are ready, comfortable uh, in front of your screen. And those of you who are already here in the studio, please uh, uh, put your comments there. Say, I'm in, I'm here, I'm ready to go so that I know that you are there and I'm not talking to myself alone. <laughs> so I'm so happy, so blessed. So I would like to thank you uh, for joining the interview. Uh, and uh, uh, just as a reminder, this interview will be will go on for about uh, an hour. And at any time you have any questions, you have any comments, please fill in those uh, comments. Uh, put in the uh, the questions there, and uh, when appropriate, we'll address the questions. We'll come up with uh, uh, we'll respond to those questions. Okay. So just be ready uh, with an open mind, be ready to learn, be ready to uh, explore what it is uh, and uh, what what we have. We are, uh, hi, Saleha, good that you are here. Uh, <laughs> I'm so excited that uh, you are here and I hope everyone else are ready to go. Uh, we'll be going live uh with uh, our speaker for this uh, evening uh and uh, we'll be starting in about two minutes walaikum salam nadra uh, thank you for being here good evening to you uh yes we've got two comments there already hey i'm so excited i hope that you have been uh, with us for the last uh, four days and uh, we've got we have had excellent uh, information uh, feedback uh, uh, from the people who uh, have been here. Yeah, uh, and then juga uh, dalam sesi interview ni kita akan campur-campur, uh, ya, yeah? campur-campur, cakap bahasa Melayu, cakap bahasa Inggeris kita campur dua-dua. And I hope that it will be comfortable for you. Uh, jadi kalau ada apa-apa yang tak faham tu tanya lah. Kasi <laughs> tu nanti nanti kan kami tersasul atau lebih uh, uh, sangat kan excited sangat so uh, and and this evening we are changing uh, changing gears so to speak we've we've had a speaker to talk about mental and emotional health we had a speaker uh, in uh, talking about uh, medical medicine uh, in the area of medicine uh, now uh, and then uh, we had uh, someone. Uh, 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 someone speaking uh, in the area of uh, 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 personal finance, and yesterday we uh, we look into the uh, the relief packages. Hi, Mas Mona. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you uh, for joining. Kita akan mula sebentar lagi dalam masa seminit lagi. Insyaallah kita akan mula. So. Uh, great that you are here. Alhamdulillah. Uh, 
Jadi kalau ada orang duk komen kat situ then I know that dah ada orang. <laughs> Because uh, kat studio ni uh, I do not know, I cannot see siapa yang uh, masuk uh, to the live sehingga kan uh, you put in the comment. Bila you put in the comment then I know that you're there. Uh, okay. So uh, just ah so now we are at nine o'clock. So we are ready to go. So let me check with uh, my uh, admin. So uh, checking, are we ready to go live? <clears throat> Hi, Ines. Uh, thank you that you're here. Uh, I'm so glad that uh, you're here, Ines. And just to mention, Ines, that we'll be using uh, two languages uh, this evening. We'll be using... Uh, uh, English and also Bahasa Melayu, so you need to uh, step up learning <laughs> Bahasa Melayu very quickly and for those of you who are already here, Ines is uh, watching this live presentation from Brazil. Yeah, jadi kita ada daripada Brazil juga. And Hasma, Waalaikumsalam, Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. So it is already 9.01, so are you ready to begin? Good, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so just checking uh, uh, with admin so that we can uh, start the session and uh, I believe that uh, Ibu Rose is already in the studio uh, right now just waiting uh, uh, Hi Chichi Chacha and uh, uh, Mas Mona is ready, Natrah ready, insyaAllah, Alhamdulillah, uh, good, to, uh, good to have you and so welcome to the uh, live event. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and Ibu Rose, thank you for joining us, Alhamdulillah, good to see you, to see you, senyum lagi tu. Thank you, because there was something happened just now. <laughs> 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 so, uh, ladies and gentlemen who are here, uh, welcome to the interview series on going beyond survival to long-term sustainable holistic wealth. Uh, uh, and thank you uh, to all of you who are here. Uh, there are a few more names that I am I want to uh, uh, welcome, uh, Ibu Rose, yeah? We have Ozi, Nisrina, Norin, Alia, Rosnani, yeah. Shofi, uh, Fida, Hassan, and Evie Chan from Hong Kong. Uh, Evie, uh, good to have you here. Uh, and uh, Nur Cahaya, Waalaikum Salam, Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Thank you for being here. Uh, this In this series, uh, we invite experts from various backgrounds to inform about the impact of the crisis from their particular expertise because uh, uh, the expertise uh, uh, that people have uh, this pandemic that happened uh, is happening right now is impacting us in many different uh, dimensions uh, initially we thought this is just the uh, the health dimension at the same time when we talk about health uh, there is the uh, mental uh, emotional aspect uh, and that is why uh, we decided to have this event so that we can look at the various aspects uh, that, uh, that is uh, impacting us. So, and the, the purpose is so that we don't just focus on surviving because for, 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 for many people, uh, we are just thinking about surviving because the, the, the impact is, uh, 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 is uh, uh, tremendous. Uh, at the same time, what we want to bring is we want to bring your mind forward beyond survival uh, to create long-term sustainability for yourself. So that is what we are going to uh, to be uh, focused on. So I uh, thank you for being here. Uh, and what we have uh, is uh, we have had uh, speakers coming from the expertise of uh, mental and emotional health. That was uh, uh, Scott Friedman on, uh, I think it was on Wednesday. <laughs> uh, on Thursday, we had uh, Professor Dr. Dr. Mafauzi 
uh, he he came with the approach, uh, the medical approach, how it's affecting us. And then on uh, Friday we had Rajan Davadesan. He he uh, approached it from the financial management, the personal finance, what we need to do uh, in this particular uh, situation. And then uh, yesterday evening we had uh, Muhammad uh, Muazzam Muhammad, the CEO of uh, Bank Islam Malaysia. Uh, talking about the uh, packages, the relief packages that the government and the public sector is uh, bringing in order to elevate the uh, condition. So, uh, and for this evening, we'll be shifting uh, shifting gears. So before we go into the topic, I'd just like to say hi to Sheila uh, from Manila, uh, Lina, Yaya, Norfendi, uh, Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Miss Erin, Kasih Adriana, and to, to Rosia Johan. So thank you to all of you for being here. And I would just like to remind, especially to our friends uh, listening from outside of Malaysia, we have uh, Sheila from the Philippines, Evie from uh, Hong Kong, uh, Ines uh, from uh, uh, Brazil that this particular interview will be mixing two languages together, will be bringing English and Bahasa Melayu together. So uh, if you are not uh, are familiar with Bahasa Melayu, contact me later and maybe I'll teach you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> so let's move on to this topic on parenting beyond survive, going beyond survival in the new normal. And this evening, we have Rosita Sha'ari, also known as Ibu Rose. She is the director of Love World Resources. Uh, Ibu Rose is an international author, inspirational speaker, and TV personality. Uh, TV, like it, yeah. She is also a love and family guru who has worked with learners of all ages. Her devotion and interest in the field of human psychology and development has led her to do extensive research in this field and eventually steered her to be a renowned figure in the field of family, parenting, and human capital development. And uh, having said that, I would like to uh, again welcome uh, Ivo Rose and thank, thank you, Evie, for the, uh, <laughs> for the uh, clap. Uh, so, Iburus, what I would like to uh, begin with is in the context of parenting. So, uh, the topic that you are bringing, going beyond survival in the new normal. I, I uh, imagine that uh, uh, pa pa parents may be uh, thinking about survival, having their children 24-7. <laughs> so, what is the relevance of this topic uh, in the context of the crisis that we are facing and what possible benefits that the viewers will get from our interview today. Thank you so much and I would just like to say thank you to everybody, wa alaikum salam to those who give me salam and thank you for all the listen, uh, the, the viewers from overseas and also from Malaysia. I'll be speaking in both languages uh, uh, because many of my uh, followers from Facebook, they are more well versed in Bahasa Malaysia. So I'll be speaking in both languages. Uh, saya akan bercakap dalam dua bahasa, insyaAllah, and you will see me very versatile. So before I answer your question, Coach Mazuki, I would like to ask this question to you. Uh, in, this today is the fifth interview, right? Why are you wearing the same t-shirt? Have you not? You, doesn't your wife wash your clothes? <laughs> <laughs> Have you not watched Charlie Brown in Peanuts? Charlie Brown only wears the same clothes every day. Oh, I wear the same type of shirt every day, not the same one. I have okay. all the same okay. and I rotate them. <laughs> so your, Steve, so your Steve Jobs did. does the same thing, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. So your wife did wash your, your clothes or you wash yourself. yourself. I <laughs> okay, wash never mind. Do myself, I say that thank you. 
<laughs> okay, thank you. The reason is I asked that question because you know I've been doing a lot of it, been interviewed uh, many many times on TV or what. But today I feel butterfly in my stomach. I don't know why. <laughs> what have you done that caused me to have butterfly in my stomach? So, Coach Mazuki, uh, the question is. Uh, that you asked, how relevant is this for us? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah how, how relevant it is uh, to go beyond uh, what we are facing uh, now, apa yang kita lalui sekarang ni, apakah relevantnya topik ini atau relevantnya parenting ini kepada uh, keadaan yang kita sedang hadapi sekarang? What is the relevant of it? Uh, that uh, this parenting uh, to what we are facing now? Is that what, what your question was? Yes. Okay, so the thing is that family is who we are. We are our true self with our family, isn't it not? So if we can can be the person, the best person that we can be in this situation that is very challenging, we can be the best anywhere. So sekiranya kita boleh menjadi seorang yang betul-betul tulit that we are and be a great example in our family we can be a great example anywhere else and at the end of this program you will see that what is happening to us now is is a blessing it is not something that is uh bukan sesuatu it's not something that is uh that should make us become weaker mm -hmm. it should make us become stronger So in the end, di akhir per, per, perbincangan kita nanti, kita akan sedar betapa sebenarnya COVID-19 ni. And once we understand what COVID-19 is about to us, kepada kita, kita akan menjadi lebih lebih berdaya. Kita akan lebih jadi lebih mampu, lebih tegas, lebih, lebih faham macam mana kita nak bergerak di dalam hidup ini. Sebab cabaran dekat, tetap akan datang. Satu demi satu demi satu cabaran. Challenges happen every day. One after another. Maybe today is COVID. Maybe next day is something else. But what we need to understand is that for every challenges that happen in our life, are we going to become weaker or are we going to become stronger? Do we just want to survive or we want to go beyond survive? So that is go beyond survival. So th this is what this topic is about. Because to me, uh, family, parenting, is about raising humanity. It is where our first school is. We understand the world in the neurosemantic language. The model of the world of a person is through the parenting, the first the first the first school is from the mother from the part from the father so that's why it is very relevant to me and uh, this topic before we go further and let us understand what parenting is let's us understand ke mana mari kita faham ke mana kita nak bawa parenting kita ni Sebenarnya, adakah hanya untuk pastikan anak kita dapat A? Is it only to so that our children get good education? So what is it about parenting? So I would just like to bring this perspective. In any organization, kita, in any organization, we have vision. Vision may give the, everybody in the organization know the direction of what to achieve. How about organization how about family organization a family adalah organisasi juga a family is also an organization do we have a vision in our family in our parenting where do we want to bring our children towards so if we cannot understand this then everything that happened in our life we become the victim of what happened rather than we become the victor Bila kita tidak faham vision kita, matlamat, purpose, tujuan, ke mana harap dia, maka apa sahaja cabaran yang datang, kita hanya menjadi mangsa. Kita tidak boleh berdaya untuk menjadi seorang yang mampu. 
Rancap satu one, satu benda yang kita kena faham. Cabaran tetap akan datang. Satu after satu. Eh? Challenges always happen. One after another. So this is something that we need to understand. Okay? So vision of parenting is what Kovi said. In anything that we do, we need to have begins with the end in mind. Al-Farabi, the Muslim philosopher said, the, the parenting is about bringing our children to heaven so that our children become the best version of themselves. And to, for them to be the best version of themselves, we need to be the best version in ourselves to self-actualize ourselves, to be the best that we can be. And to be the best we can be is a process. So our mission every day is to help our children to be better than they were before, to help our children to be the best of themselves one step at a time. And to do this, we require competencies. And the component in competency are three components. Yeah, three component. I I'm looking at the question that Chicha is giving some question or that I will look at this question later. Yes, I am. Okay. Now, three component, three components. Uh, I will be mixing the language. If if uh, you find that you cannot follow, can you just let me know so that I can repeat some of the points that I might have not said it in another language. So, kalau ibu ada tersebut. Uh, uh, sesuatu yang ibu mungkin cakap dalam bahasa Inggeris tapi tak cakap dalam bahasa Melayu Can you please uh, just uh, note kat situ supaya uh, apa namanya, uh, ibu akan dapat cakapkan dalam bahasa uh, Melayu eh? So, uh, we require skills, oh, sorry, we require, require competency And I am, will mention all this so that before we can answer the question When we have put the foundation of what we are talking about then it's easier for us to see how uh, whatever that question that will come, we will be able to build on that. Just like when we do not have a foundation on anything, so everything goes haywire. So it's just like having a fruit bowl, a context, or maybe uh, if we want to build a building, we need to have a foundation, strong foundation. So the thing is this, in order for us to be able to help and bring our children to have to and help them to be the best version of themselves. Okay, we need to be the best version of ourselves. So we need to also have this competency to do. So the component of co competencies are our attitude, our skills, and our knowledge. Now let me ask you this question. Yes, yeah, sorry. Competency component dalam competency adalah. Uh, sikap kita, skill kita, knowledge kita. Now, let me ask you this question. During this COVID-19, does the vision of parenting change? Adakah visi dalam parenting itu berubah dalam cabaran COVID-19? Let me, let me ask this question. I want to see whether you can answer me. Yeah, I know there is a little bit of light. Of course not. Tak, again, it doesn't change. We still hope and want our children to be the best version of themselves. We want to help them to be the best version of themselves. Now, what changed then? What changed is the skill, perhaps. The knowledge that we need to acquire. Skills, that skills, for example, there are skills about that we need to have. How to work from home with our children around. That's a skill that we need to have. So, kalau bila, apa yang berlaku adalah skill ini mungkin berubah kerana skill ini kerana keadaan semasa working from home memerlukan skill yang berbeza dari working at the office. So kenapa ya? Kenapa? Why many mothers, many mothers especially, are facing challenges and they are driving themselves bonkers and thinking that they are a bad mother or bad mother many mothers think that they are bad mothers because they cannot cope with their children they cannot become the tutor they don't they, they just overwhelmed with so many responsibilities 
And they, they, they come to the conclusion in saying that I'm a bad mother. I cannot teach my children. I don't know how to teach my children. And I don't know how to cope with some uh, with uh, work. And this come to the point whereby they almost break down. Now, sayang, yeah, ding, ding sini. this is a new normal. Be compassionate with yourself because this is something new. Everything that is easy now was one very hard. It was very hard to walk. When you were small, it was very hard to walk, but you persist. You learn the skill, you learn the strategy, you learn the technique. So now what happened now is that we are actually at the point, if it is about competency, let me give you some idea. Yeah. About competency. First, many people, they are not aware that they are not aware. They are unconscious, they are not competent. They are unconscious that they are not competent to uh, to work from home with the children around them. So you are you 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 were unconscious incompetent in that area. Jadi kita, so what are yeah. uh, what are the demands of working from home? So for example, what's different? Working, yeah. For example, you have to attend to your work. At the same time, your children need you to help them with their schoolwork. Sometimes one household only have one phone and the teachers need to teach the children using uh, to have Zoom classes and all that. So these are the, the challenges that many are facing. Yeah? Banyak mengalami keadaan ini uh, yang menyebabkan and sometimes because children, they, they are not properly told. They thought that uh, it is uh, Hari Raya. <laughs> So you know the first week of uh the first week of PKP the first week of MCO right uh many I, I receive a lot of uh uh quite a lot of uh question ramai minta tolong ibu macam mana anak-anak ni tak boleh um, you know uh, I've been feeding them saya rasa macam penat sangat I've been feeding them six times in one hour, satu jam, makan sampai enam kali. And your, your husband pun join sekali. Oh, masak lah, masak tu, masak ni. And but the, the, the wife need to work at the same time. So the children don't know because the children was not informed. Because we take for granted that they know what's going on. They don't know. They need to be told. They need to be addressed. The, the, the thing need to be shared. What is happening around them now? What is this COVID-19? What, what is it that they need to do? And all that need to be told to them and get their, uh, what do you call, uh, their, uh, their cooperation, how they can actually help one another, help you, uh, for example. So, uh, I just would like to share about this uh, level of competency so that you understand why many mothers and man, uh, many parents, they are going through this with a lot of burnout, like a but like burnout can. So, but yeah, they, they were, they, first you don't know that you don't know how to work from home. Uh, before you might have worked from home, but your children go to school. So it is totally now it's different. Your children don't go to school. You have to work from home at the same time, look after them, look at their work, uh, schoolwork and all. So you don't have that skill. So now you realize that you are conscious and competent in that area. So when you realize that you are you are conscious, incompetent, so you feel that you need to learn. You need to acquire the skill. What do you need to do? You need to strategize because when you start, when bila dah mula tersedar bahawa you tak tahu, bila you sedar you tak tahu, maka you kena belajar. Because now it is a new skill that is required. And you know, it is, the the the, the, the changes happen so fast, you sleep, you sleep, uh, in one, one night and then the next day is totally a different world and some of you you know you don't bersedia you are not prepared for that it was quite quite a sudden because 
we, are, we were not prepared. But when suddenly you realize the children are at home, you need to tutor them because the teachers are away and uh, you need to work from home. You have KPI that you need to meet and all that. But yeah, to, to some organization, they give some uh, time for, for, the, for the workers uh, to adjust. But now still uh, working from home, now we have already almost, I mean, almost coming to three months uh, PKP, PKPB, many have to work from home as well. So what, once we realize that we are not competent in that area, the choice, the resourceful choice that we want to take is to learn the skill. That's what I said. The vision doesn't change, but the skills might need to, uh, we need to learn new skills. So how do, what do you need to do? So you, you ask the right question. So what is it that you want at the end of this week or at the end of every day? What is it that you want? Ask that question. So I want my children to be able to wake up early in the morning so that they will be able to, uh, uh, they, everything will be in proper order. I would like to have, uh, be able to meet my KPI. So these are the things that you said, that is what you want. So the next question you ask is, how can I do that? Because I cannot give you the answer because your kind of work might be different. So, uh, that is uh, apa namanya ibu tak boleh nak cakap apa yang specific yang you kena buat kerana kerja you itu mungkin unik ya yeah? mungkin unik uh, tak sama dengan yang lain so kita tak boleh pukul borong kita tak, we cannot just generalize but the point is that ask the right question be clear of what you want because our children is not Newson, don't ever think about the seek up, uh, the attitude in in the competency component of competency, the attitudes towards uh, parenting. Uh, the attitude doesn't change. Our children is still our responsibility. They are, dalam uh, in in Malay we say that adalah amanah yang dianugerahkan, anugerah yang diamanahkan. Uh, it will to translate it in, in English. Can you help me, uh, Coach Mars, how to translate um, uh, anugerah yang diamanahkan? The, the, the gift that has been given as a responsibility to you. Yes. That is, and, and we, are, we are the set right example to them. That does not change. But what change will be? Not, not, it does not change. The skill does not change, but it needs to be enhanced. So you need to learn the, the, the skill of coaching or tutoring your children. You might not be the subject matter expert. You, uh, if it is maths, you are not expect to learn maths. But if you can, why not? If your children are uh, uh, scholar in the, uh, primary school, maybe you can learn. But the point is that to teach your children require a certain attitude, a certain skill, and certain knowledge about the phase in the maturity phase in, in the development of children. So maybe if I can, uh, if I can just summarize what you have said so far, yes. is that if we were to observe uh, uh, parents prior mm. to the pandemic, is that you are performing your roles at different times. A certain hour of the day, you are performing your role as a worker. Then certain mm. hour of the day, you are performing your role as a parent. Yes. So there is that clear cut uh, switch between roles. So mm. that is why uh, you are so used to that. That is why uh, it be has become easy. It becomes conscious, uh, unconscious competent. Uh, when the pandemic came, what happened is that now you have to bring all the roles plus an additional at the same time. You are playing the role of the worker, playing the role of parent, and now the added role as a, as a tutor all at the same time. So now it is a skill of managing the head. So, so how do you juggle those various, uh, probably the first thing is to recognize that you need to wear the different hats at the same time. You, you said it already. The first thing is to embrace it because there's no point for us 
to be angry about what is happening to us now. There's a lot of blessing that is happening to us due to this COVID-19. Later we'll discuss about that. Jadi yang pertama adalah untuk kita menerima. Count our blessing. All this while, many mothers, I say mothers, cry at night. Cry in the car because they have to leave their children early in the morning while the children are still sleeping and came back home at night when the children are already sleeping. Many mothers cry because they cannot see their children. So now the situation gives us this opportunity to see our children in front of our eyes every day. So first is to accept, to understand that this is something that we can work on. Because at the moment, we are un, we are conscious incompetent. We can move towards conscious competent by learning the skill, by learning how to juggle the head. For example, practical example that I will give to you. For example, uh, you don't have much time to cook. So don't cook every meal. Cook all your meal in the morning. Wake up early in the morning. Cook your breakfast and then cook your lunch and dinner right there. Make it as simple as possible. And some of you maybe, kalau you nak masak kari, ujung nak masak all these uh, gravy things, apa semua tu, mungkin simpan dalam peti ais and put inside the fridge. Because when you need it, just heat it back and then you can tambah dengan, you can add eggs and all and, and veggie and all that. But you the cooking time will be cut down a lot. And get your children, because your children actually, they already go to school. Mereka memang pergi sekolah, yang pergi sekolah ni. Dan, dan mereka memang dah bangun pagi dah pun. They already wake up early in the morning. So, just follow the routine. Why is it that during this PKP, you allow them to wake up late? Just follow the routine. You want to allow them to wake up late over the weekend, that's different. But follow the routine. They wake up what time? And then they start doing what what is it that they need to do so get the routine set the routine if you don't have routine then set the routine and make it simple and be patient for them to adapt to the routine because everybody are in this chaos so the 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 the, the danger is when we push one another but we will be less uh, stressful when we are able to be more compassionate to one another. When bila kita boleh bertolak ansur, boleh tenang. Kalau cikgu, there are a lot of complaints saying that the teacher should not get their salary. My God, why do we have to say all those things? The teachers, they want to teach the children. They want to teach. Some of them are missing their, 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 their student. But they cannot go to your house and teach. So this kind of attitude of saying this person uh, patut dipotong gaji, uh, cut their salary, because that will make the whole thing become worse. How about for us to be more compassionate? This, so we are in are this the together. The yeah. state so what is, are the states that will be useful for parents? The state that will be useful for parents is the state, state of acceptance. Mm -hmm. the state of uh, giving, the state of uh, exploring, uh, joyful exploring, how about teaching my child how to learn uh, multiplication and, you know, to be, uh, to be excited about it. And uh, for children, uh, I remember when I was, uh, I was, uh, when, Anna, when my, 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 my third and my fourth son, uh, uh, ch ch children uh, follow me to Bintulu when I have to do presentation, I mean, have to conduct a program, they followed me. So when I have to do the presentation in the classroom, in the seminar room, I put them in, in, in a room whereby they learn multiplication. At the end of the, f how many days was that? About six or six days, they learn all the multiplication from multiplication two until 12, both of them. At that time, uh, Umay was 10 years old and Anas was 8 years old. And Anas would uh, get the benefit uh, because he learned multiplication when he was in standard 2. Sepatutnya itu syllabus uh, standard 
poor. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, I'm bringing this example is to understand that uh, when we are in difficulty, the state is the state of gratefulness. That's what uh, Scott says. The GPS, gratitude, being grateful, being feeling blessed, understand what is happening and count the blessing, then we will be able to go through these challenges beautifully. Our children, our children are looking at us, how we conduct ourselves in this trying time. Anak-anak kita sebenarnya melihat diri kita, melihat contoh dari kita, macam mana kita melalui cabaran ni. What are, what are the uh, conversation at the dinner table? Every day, what is our conversation at the dinner table? Are we uh, lay blaming others? Are we saying bad things about others? Are we uh, kutuking? <laughs> Adakah kita mengutuk orang itu, mengutuk orang semasa kita di in, in, at the dinner table? Because that is where the children learn unconsciously. So to be, to be, to be, to be aware of our state but of course it's difficult at first but that is what this is teaching us that's what COVID-19 is teaching us to be our highest and best self as much as every as many moments as we can because our children are there to see us nobody else is seeing us only the family during the PKB it's only the family so if we have not been the best version of ourselves, then we need to be. We need to work. We need to work on ourselves. So it is to to be able to go beyond survival require us to be a better version of ourselves before this, because it's not. We are not aiming for survival. We are aiming to make that great difference. So this COVID-19 is helping us to put our foundation strong so that we can spend our time with ourselves because that is where it should begin. Our intrapersonal need to be developed strongly. Shaima says, teach the elders and let the elders teach the second one. And the second child teach the third child. Save time, but most of all, help the children learn and understand the subject on another level, especially when they try to teach. Exactly. It is not about memorization. It is about loving the knowledge. It's about seeing how the knowledge is relevant to our everyday life. It is about self-directed learning. Actually, in, uh, in learning, in Malaysia, we actually already wanted to start self-directed learning. However, we want to start it in the future, but the future is now. So, <laughs> so children, children love to learn. Actually, children really love to learn. Betul tak, Coach Z? Uh, Coach uh, Mas, betul tak? <laughs> oh, <Sorry>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? They will not stop. They will, they will not stop learning. In fact, they will stop eating rather than stop learning. But they learn by playing. Can. Uh, and, that, and and probably there is something that Ibu Rose, you maybe you want to highlight. Uh, okay. Because parents they get they get stressed out because the children are playing all day long. <laughs> and it's just that parents don't recognize or appreciate that play and learning is one and the same for children. Yes. You know what? Grandparents learn, need to learn. Not, grandparents need to play with their grandchildren. <laughs> and they're just joking with you. <laughs> Actually, yes. Because children learn by playing. When we were younger, masa kita muda kan? When we were younger, we play. We play a lot. And do you remember, five minutes means so much to us. If we are asked to go to sleep and we ask for five minutes and we feel like, our, ma our mother gave us five minutes to play and that means so much to us. Do you remember that feeling? Because there's so much learning happened during playing. So uh, that's why children love to play. And playing is learning. So if you can teach the children by playing, 
there's a lot that they can do. For example, they want to learn, uh, for example, some of you, your children stand at one and this uh, pandemic happened, right? So they only start to learn ABC and all that. Instead of uh, teaching them ABC and writing, you can play do and make ask them to make ABC and all that. You can do many things. Uh, if you find it difficult, go and Google how to uh, how to teach your children the fun way. You know that it, you'll find it, and maybe you can come together. Mothers come together, give ideas. Actually, there are many uh, places that you can go to. I know of one place called Little Finger. Uh, you can go to the Instagram. Uh, she has uh, 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 what it call uh, she teach but parents, mothers, especially how to how to play with their children. And by playing mean learning. Yeah. Okay, so uh, where was I? <laughs> what, what are some of the, uh, because you have been interacting with parents, especially mothers during this uh, uh, MCO. So what are some of the problems that they are facing and what strategies uh, have you advised them to take in order to overcome those? Okay, uh, yeah, I've been, uh, uh, I've been asked in many uh, situations, sometimes because I do a lot of life, uh, that's why I, I'm alive. <laughs> okay. Actually, yes, when I do life, I become alive, actually. <laughs> because uh, yeah they ask question about uh how do they cope uh because they, because some of them they have children like us when we were first got married we have four children zoop like that within five years we have five children four children that's not my fault <laughs> okay <clears throat> by the way for those who, of you who don't know mazuki is my husband we share the same bed <laughs> Okay, so sometimes I like to tease him. Okay, <laughs> so uh, they ask question like, how do I cope with this children that of different age? I mean, close age, uh, two years, four years, six years, eight years. And Shaima just now gave a very good example. Teach the eldest and help the elder teach the second and the third and the fourth. And when you teach your eldest, Please be kind. Please be compassionate. Otherwise, you will see yourself when your elders teach the younger one. <laughs> you see you. The words that you say and all that. Teach with compassion. <laughs> okay, so, uh, and then there are other things, for example, like uh, coping uh, every day. Uh, Children doesn't want to listen to them. Uh, some some of them staying with their parents, so their the their grandparent overrule their rules and all that. So that issue, memang ada lah, ada yang macam tu. So what do we do? So I said the thing is that that is the issue on leadership. I mean to say with your children, you have not managed to actually get the uh, uh, I, don't, I don't like to use the word respect. They do respect you, but they don't have, they don't, uh, they do not see your authority. Uh, so that is something that you need to learn. All this thing that happened to us, and we find that it is a challenge for us, is actually like a mirror in front of us and tell us that this is the things that you need to improve on yourself. Because the moment you start improving, then you will find that you become a better person, you become a more able person. But if you do not want to look at it and you do not want to embrace it or or uh, terima, eh? terima, menerima, embrace it and understand that that is my not so strong areas now. So what can I do about it? So when you have that challenge, learn, find someone you can learn from and then get over it, get and overcome that. Because the moment you say that, the moment you understand you are at the conscious incompetent, the next thing Thing to do is to get yourself to be conscious competent. This is just like driving a car. If you were to ask a six-year-old, 
can you drive a car? Of course, the six years old say that I can drive a car, but of course, it's not true. Betul lah, it's not true. Enam budak enam tahun. Azahra, our eldest, at the age of about less than a year, she thought eldest that she can drive. Eldest grandchild. Yeah. What did I say? Our eldest child. I was say our eldest. Our <laughs> eldest grandchild. Okay, we have ten <laughs> grandchildren, okay? <laughs> Okay, she thought that she can send her uh, Matsu to school and drive Matsu to school. At that time, she was only one, uh, um, almost one years old. She doesn't know that she doesn't know. Unconscious incompetent. And suddenly, then she realized that she was, uh, she was conscious about her, her inability to drive. And still, and now she is only 11, going 12. She still not, doesn't learn how to drive. The point is, like for us, initially, we don't know how to drive. And then we learn how to drive. And then we become conscious, uh, competent. We know we know how to drive. And later on, we become unconscious, competent. Sambil-sambil driving, boleh pakai makeup lagi. While driving, you can put your makeup and all this. And you can, you know, so many things at the same time. Multitasking. <laughs> Because you are so... Uh, you already reached the unconscious competence. So, at this point where we are, we are facing this challenge. Be kind to yourself. Know that you are at the stage of learning, the stage of learning new skill. Because now it is a new normal. The world, the way things are done, businesses are done. The everything is, is new, so we need to be kind to ourselves. We can find ways how we can work with the teachers, you know, and understand the teachers, their 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 limitation, their uh, what they can what they can give and what they can't give. Take ownership of your own children's learning. For example, if you need to bring in tutor using uh, Skype or using Zoom. You can do that for those who have more money uh, to do it. So solve the problem one after another and just see that you become such more capable person because now you can you can do your work while your children are around. And isn't that not a blessing to see your children when they wake up and you are there, when they go to sleep and you are there? Isn't it not a blessing? We have been asking this for so long. And maybe after this, organization can think of how can this be the new normal? And it is still become highly more productive, more effective. That's the question that we want to start answering. Because this is, when we start looking at it from the positive angle, we will find more positive solution. Uh, if I may just uh, point out over here, because we uh, we have been talking about the areas of competencies. So mm -hmm. uh, listening from you, uh, what I uh, probably, uh, uh, what I am getting is that in the area of uh, uh, competencies right now, uh, mm -hmm. parents are already, uh, I would say, competent in the area of work as a worker. Mm -mm. Uh, and parents are already competent in, uh, as parents. So one challenge that they have, the skill uh, that uh, they need to learn is the skill of ma managing the roles to the skill of being flexible enough in changing the roles because before the lockdown, they can become a worker and come back home, become a parent. Now they have. Now they need the skill of being flexibly interchanging the role. So that's probably one skill that uh, they can focus on. The other is the uh, the added role of a tutor. So now they need to uh, learn the skill of how to be a tutor, to be a teacher, and what you rightly mentioned. If you find that that is not the skill that you can get. Uh, You can do it because some people then, some people cannot teach their own children. They become a uh, lioness <laughs> <laughs> or dragons. <laughs> actually, you can actually once you understand the skill. When, because I do have this program called Help Your Children Score A. 
I think I'm going to turn that into an online program because that will help many parents actually how to teach their children. Uh, it also look into the three components, the competencies. Yeah. <laughs> so and, actually, and, to be, mm -hmm. and, and this is also goes into uh, the beliefs that parents have about themselves, that parents have about their children. Uh, yeah. If the parents have the belief that children know nothing and I have to teach them everything, I think that's when the parents will have a lot of problems. Yes, and uh, you can also teach your children how to cook. You can teach huh. your children how to wash dishes, how to wash clothes, and to, to understand what's going on with washing clothes and all that. It is going to be discovery. I just like to answer this question from Suryati. I just saw this question. Ibu, anak memang suka bermain tapi suka main game PS, PS4, iPad, TikTok. Uh, I translate into English. Uh, Suryati said that her ch the children just lo love to play, but they love to play uh, games, PS4, uh, iPad, TikTok. The thing is, sweetheart, Uh, bagi ibu lah ya. Sebenarnya semua itu adalah Atas kita, leadership kita So sebenarnya uh, Kenapa mereka main iPad Kenapa mereka main TikTok Because uh, uh, as parents Kita kita tak betul-betul Ambil masa Untuk explain pada mereka Benda ni dia ada masa untuk bermain Boleh main uh, iPad tu boleh tengok Tapi ada masa If you find that your children are uh, Terlebih dalam bab itu, you can sebagai seorang ibu dan seorang parent, you can ask them not to do that. Yeah, you can ask them to stop doing that. You can teach them. You can, uh, you boleh uh, bantu mereka untuk nampak kenapa bermain benda tu tidak mendatangkan. Itu sebenarnya dia tidak sihat. It is not good for the brain when it is continuous. What we were saying about games just now, games that. Uh, learning games for example uh, main masak-masak <laughs> uh, what else uh, uh, jigsaw puzzle a do and all and uh, other than just ipad yeah uh, other than just uh, ps4 and tiktok tiktok ni boleh uh, you can but you look at the creativity um, sometimes i don't know about tiktok i'm not so good in, I don't quite understand yet TikTok, but I can see that many of the children, they they do TikTok, they have to choreograph a certain movement and things like that. So if that come into the the learning, uh, you can be creative on that. And yes, Suryati, so that's it too. Suryati kena lebih asah lagi your leadership because tak boleh, tak boleh biarkan. If that is the only thing that they love, then it is not uh, really advisable. Yeah, so I was answering Suryati about that, and I said that uh, if that is what they only like to play, then you as a parent need to understand that you are in the leadership role. You need to let them know that they cannot just do just play with their iPad, their PS4, and TikTok. They it, that thing is if it is just that, then it is not um, going. I don't advise that actually. I do not advise that. There is a lot of question, uh, coach. Uh, yeah. coach so, Mas if if you want to address the question, because we are already at nine fifty three, so maybe yeah. if you want to address some of those questions. Yeah, actually, there's a lot of other things I want to say, but uh, maybe <laughs> I'll say this first. Uh, who is this COVID nineteen actually? Because uh, when we realize that, I'm not answering COVID nineteen as a virus. We know that, uh, Prof. That took Dr. Bafazi already mentioned that he 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 is a renowned figure. He he knows he talk about it from the medical aspect. But I just like you to I just like to bring our perspective to this COVID nineteen and what does COVID nineteen does to us. Let's count the positive things that happened since COVID nineteen. Okay, there are many things, but I just like to focus on the positive things. For example, you start to be able to stay at home, see your children more. And many in many houses, you start to, for the Muslim, you start to pray together as Jumaah. And maybe in, in, in the people of faith, they start to have congregation in the family as a family. That bring the closeness. And recently, during the Ramadan, uh, semasa Ramadan, 
many many uh, household uh, do the tar- tarawih prayer bersemain tarawih and the husband lead the prayer instead of all the, all this while we go to the masjid we go to the mosque but now the husband is leading let, let the prayers so some of the husband they are not used to that but because of that uh, challenge uh, they rise to the challenge and they, they 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 actually lead the tarawih prayer isn't it not beautiful uh, where the husband or the father actually rise to the challenge of being a leader because that's what man is in in a family and uh, during the the raya the puas the raya uh, the uh, uh, there is a prayer and many uh, f- many uh, father many husband uh, they become the the imam and they read the the khutbah and they, they lead the prayers which is so beautiful Right, so what is COVID nineteen is actually the, my perspective is, I look at it as yes, it is a challenge too, and it is also a blessing that brings us all together. We see our 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 partners, and we have more time to look at our partners. Yes, maybe with the cases that uh, quarrel happen, or berkelahi and things like that, domestic violence. There's another issue with this domestic violence. Uh, apa dia yang domestic violence ni what happened is that I hope that somebody will address this issue I hope the, the government will address this issue but at the same time what can we do about that those for me what I do every day when I wake up in the morning when I can I will go to the my window and I will make prayer and look at the people i can only see few bit few uh, not not my view is was it's not so big but i pray for everyone i pray for and i can see uh, an apartment uh, in front of me and i pray for all those people any any of the families that are facing challenges i pray for them so this is prayers is something that we can do we can start giving one of the reason why malaysia we do not suffer much is because there are so many kind people in this malaysia and yeah, people Uh, that help one another, uh, bersedekah, helping, membantu. And this is something that is so beautiful that actually once we understand, uh, as mothers, we start to, to, to rise. We start to raise our ability to be able to tutor our children, to be able to uh, cope and with time. Uh, and, 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 and as a husband, start helping. And some husband help to cook. And some husband help to sidai kain. Uh, uh, apa namanya? Uh, what is it? Um, coach, coach Mas? Sidai kain is what? Uh, hang the, the clothes. clothes to dry. Yeah. Help because in the house is not the responsibility of the woman alone. The house is where we live. We want it to be clean. Everybody cleans the house. So that to me, once we understand this, get this right. And then later on when we go are able to get out get over this covid-19 we'll be able to appreciate even more and yesterday cik muazzam the ceo of the bank islam talk about all the is the uh, what is it relief uh, relief packages relief packages we are in a country that is compassionate it is so beautiful So when we are able to count this blessing, get our children to understand that. Talk about that at the dinner table. At the, that is our conversation. Surround our house with gratefulness, gratitude, the GPS that Scott says. And for those parents who find that their work is at the challenge at the moment, go and find new job. As what uh, Rajan was saying, right? Rajan. Yes. So we do what we can do and we count our blessing and we will see that challenges are just there to make us greater people. And we can be that greater people because the aim of parenting is to be the best version, to help our children to be the best version of themselves and we be the best version of ourselves. How do we do that? Become better than we were yesterday. And as we move on, become better than we were yesterday. And we help more people 
than we helped yesterday. We, we, we say good words, more good words, today than yesterday, the next day than yesterday. So when we start doing this, we are changing the world. The thing is about this pandemic. If we focus on the negative things, we are creating the negative ripple impact. But if we, as a whole, start to focus on the positive things, so we shift the mass consciousness to positivity. And the, by the law that governs us, by the law of our creator, the, the law of deliberate creation in the law of attraction, under that, there is a law of deliberate creation. When we understand this, our mind and our heart join everyone together, as many of us that we can, and we shift it. This is what we call the mass consciousness. We shift it. Then we'll see the world become a better place. And that's why I wrote this book. Uh, how does it A love world. I'm not selling it, but just telling you that I wrote the book, uh, published uh, internationally. So, Coach Mas, uh, is there anything else that you need to say? So, so what, uh, what frames, what mindsets that the parents need to, uh, need to adopt, need to take on for themselves, that will, uh, that will make them more flexible, more adaptable to the... Uh, changing situation. So what kind of beliefs, what kind of uh, mindsets do they need to take in order to be able to handle? Uh, because some of them were saying that the children were jumping all over the house, breaking this and that. So what mindsets do they, do they, do they need to take about themselves and about children in order for them to be able to handle the situations better? I will take a deep breath on that. <clears throat> And when I say this, I say it from my heart, that you are a wonderful person. You have the resource inside of you to overcome those challenges. Those challenges happen in front of you for you to dig inside and understand what you have not been doing right, that you can write it. So if the children are jumping here and there, it shows that you do not have proper rules in your house that the children are challenged, are challenging you that because the erratic behavior is due to their feeling not secure. Because in this situation with the pandemic, what are the conversation that is said in the house? The children can feel your vibes. If you are talk and you are always angry, if you are always feeling fearful, the children can feel that and that make them become erratic. That is a, a sample of erratic behavior. But if you can calm yourself down, find a way to do that. Ibu ada cara dia. Ibu boleh bantu. But now today, as you know, I cannot uh, share it. But you can go to my page because from time to time I will be sharing how you can do centrism. Center yourself. And if for the people, for Muslims, start praying. Start making sure that you pray on time. For the people of faith, do your prayers. Because prayers, the house that is that prayers are done, you can feel the energy is very calming. You can also put something like that that I put. That is my uh, what you call essential oil, rose love, that will help. So I and thought it, I thought that was your plantation. I ah uh, yeah, I put it in my room because plant give me a feeling of calmness. So purposely do that. So you, these are all exterior things that help the inter, to, in, to your inner self as well, your inner being. So if you find that your children are not, are not calm, chances are because you are not calm. So Ibu say this with kindness. So the mind that in your children are good, that is the mindset. Your children are good, you are good. You are a wonderful person. You just need to learn the skill. You need to add more knowledge and correct your attitude. Then you'll be able to move from 
un unconscious incompetent to conscious competent and later on it become you it become your character because character is built this way thoughts become words become action become habit become character and character leads you to your destiny so you want happiness or you want misery so at the thought level because thought will singgah kat situ and when you say yes to the thought coach mas jadi apa what is it that it become it become your belief, belief become a belief so this belief is the one that you see happening around you you believe your children cannot behave you see your children cannot behave so start believing the right belief resourceful belief because if you think anything that is not what you want check what you believe inside because you are a wonderful person you deserve wonderful life you deserve meaningful life you deserve to make positive difference in this world don't just ask what other people can do for you now to go beyond survival is to rise and ask what can i do to make a positive difference in this world now in anything that i do can, if you don't have money start writing posting that can help elevate the feeling of happiness in people if you don't know how to write share postings that will help so that more people will read the positive uh, postings and start sending wonderful prayers to people that's how we can help change the mass consciousness to positivity so that we can rise above this COVID-19 and become a better nation. And it all starts with our parenting of ourselves, then parenting of our children. So thank you for saying that. Uh, what I am also detecting uh, from what you are saying, uh, the other skill that, uh, and to, uh, this is a core skill uh, uh, that, parents because parents are leaders and the core skill in leadership is the skill of managing your own states your mental and emotional states so that's a skill so that is another skill that probably you want to uh, learn to manage yes. your states uh, at times you are uh, uh, you emote you you feel uh, unresourceful state feeling uh, as what you mentioned feeling uh, uh, unsettled, feeling upset, feeling angry, feeling frustrated with children. Those are unresourceful states that may cause you to speak out or behave in ways that can hurt or harm the child. So as parents, having the skill of how to manage that state, to quickly shift into states that are loving and kind and to be able to speak to children uh, in those ways. Sweetheart. I can call you sweetheart, right? Because you're my husband. Mm. <laughs> okay. And I would have to say, and I would like to say this, when you want to learn about how to manage your state, learn from Coach Mas. Because I, this is what I observe, and he's able to teach in terms of the process to be able to be able to handle your state, manage your state, to change from being angry to be calm in a very fast and easy and safe way. So I just like to say that to you. It may be later you can ask him uh, on his Facebook. Maybe he can share some. So I just would like to ask uh, answer some question. Coach Mas, can I? May yes, I? go ahead. Yeah. Pendapat Ibu Ros, patut ke sekolah dibuka secepat mungkin atau buka bila betul-betul confirm virus dah tak ada? Tak ada jaminan kan dah selamat kat luar ke sana. Budak-budak dah lah reckless pegang itu ni. Yes, uh, as a grandmother, because my children are really big. As a grandmother, I would really pray. Actually, yes, memang my hajat pun uh, that the school will not open until the pandemic is more in control. So we need to find a way how, how we can educate our children from home uh, so that the children will not be left behind. Uh, that is something that we need to do uh, and think about that. Uh, and if I were to bring in the perspective that uh, uh, Dr. Mafauzi mentioned, is that uh, what we need to realize that we will need to accept the fact that we will live with COVID-19 for the rest of our life. 
because the the virus is already there and uh, you do not er eradicate that virus like flu virus is still yeah. here SARS MERS it is still there uh, mm -hmm. so it's about managing our activities to prevent the uh, uh, the infection that's all and the key thing is physical distancing that's the key thing yes, the behavior of physical and that need yeah. to be taught and practiced uh, and this need to be really thoroughly thought properly before yeah. we bring our children to the school to because they need to learn about physical distancing they need to understand uh, the danger of the virus they need to know how to take care of themselves because we will not be there. We cannot expect the teachers to take care of 40 children because it's not going to be easy. We take care of four children in our household. Pecah sana, pecah sini, uh, or everything go haywire. So I hope that uh, people in who are responsible and uh, how do you say it, orang yang bertanggungjawab, they will really, really give this a proper thought uh, before opening uh, the school because our children is very valuable to us so we want to be able to make sure they are safe <clears throat> so Rosnani show and what what how should we should be the direction of parenting now this the direction of net parenting now this is still to help the children to be the best version of themselves it's still that it's still the vision the things that we might have to adjust and maybe enhance will be the skills and the knowledge in order to bring them there saya tak pandai mengajar anak kalau mengajar jadi mak singa tapi cikgu tak dapat tolong kesian anak-anak saya macam mana nak macam nak buat ibu dan untuk nur cahaya uh, what you can do is that uh, ajar sekadar yang boleh dulu if you can have you have a little bit of money ada duit sikit maka dapatkan tutor yang boleh ajar online tu yang ibu suggest lah ya sayang and i go very fast uh, coach mas ya yeah? uh, maybe ibu ros you can tell uh... Uh, upon it, parents mm. that they have a very big resource and that they can tap into mm. the university of youtube <laughs> yes <laughs> but but yeah i think i think uh, coach ma sometimes we really if when we have the time well you actually uh, can help parents to actually help them how they can use uh, the university of youtube <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, <laughs> and and when it comes to when it comes to learning content there is a lot of uh, learning content uh, that has been developed one of them is Khan Academy uh, they yeah. have developed a lot of learning content the thing about it is this do parents do not under, underestimate your children's ability to learn mm -hmm. yeah I've, I I got that uh, I got that big uh, kick on the head when I realized that my uh, grasshopper was following the uh, psychology of uh, de development, uh, crash course in developmental psychology. She followed that on YouTube. So, uh, and at that time, she was what? I think about nine years old. Mm. So, do not underestimate the ability of your children to learn. So, make use of those resources. At the same time, when my coach Mas was saying that uh, the premise is still uh, you need to let to get your children to understand the rules and the boundaries, so that they will not use the YouTube channel wrongly. So that come to that the foundation, balik lah, the foundation of our parenting. That's why in parenting it requires us. If I were to talk about parenting, it's not enough for just one hour, because parenting is a big uh, topic by itself. So why some children can listen to their, their parents by just them when the parents just say, can you please help me? And some children, the parent will say in a nice tone, but they, they don't want to listen because the first parents, they have built the foundation correctly. The second one, maybe they miss something. So it is not just something that we can finish talking in one hour. And that's why I would like to invite uh, for those yang mana yang tak berapa faham ibu bercakap bahasa Inggeris kat sini, insyaAllah ibu akan live dengan topik yang sama uh, di 
Facebook ibu insyaAllah dalam uh, minggu dah hadapan supaya you get the best uh, apa namanya uh, jawapannya pada soalan-soalan ni banyak ni that I will answer insyaAllah and uh, I'll be, actually we speak more in English today Coach Mas without we realizing but I hope that those who do not really uh, well versed in in English yang tak berapa pandai bahasa Inggeris so is that they, they are okay they still can follow Oh, by the way, before we go, I hampir terlupa. Actually, I'm giving everyone an e-book for free. It is 17 Ideas for Successful Parenting. Uh, I hope uh, we are going to give that in our, in the... Uh, Coach Mas, we are going to give that uh, uh, here. We'll, we, we'll send you uh, an email tomorrow. Uh, with, the uh, but, uh, with the link. With the link. If we can have the link now pun boleh juga kan? Huh? It's up there. Uh, I hope that, uh, uh, yeah, I hope that Anwar will put the link uh, soon. Uh, if he's not putting the link, let me see. Uh, Coach Mas, can you talk first? Cakap dulu. Uh, the I link is there me. on the screen. Yeah, it is on the screen, but I want to put it not on the screen because if it is on the screen, they cannot click. Okay, so uh, now it is already 10.15 and I would like to thank all of you for being here. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, grateful for Ibu Rose for being here. So before we end, Ibu Rose, uh, what uh, would you like to say as a parting word, as a, uh, something that you want to say to the uh uh, to the viewers before we end. Okay, first and foremost, thank you so much for being with us this evening uh, and thank you for your question, for your uh, comments. Uh, thank you for participating. We have a lot of questions actually today uh, and I am sorry that I'm not able to answer some of the questions, most of the questions and uh, I hope that uh, th this is my prayer for everyone that we will be able to become stronger. We will be able to become a better version of ourselves, rise above these challenges and just not just survive but go beyond survival. Understand what's going on and actually ask the right question. Uh, see our family as a blessing in our life look at the eyes of each and every one of our children and thank God for them. Look into the eyes of your partner and really feel the love inside of you blossom because we are in all this together. And, re and send prayers to everyone that are with us, those the teachers, our bosses, our workers. We are all in this together. Oh, our leaders, our country leaders, we are all in this together. So are we going to make this the best time of our life? That when we look back, we see ourselves as someone who is able to embrace challenges and rise above it and become a better person. And we see our children and we see our children uh, learning that and become that version of human being. And when we can come together as a community, as a country, as a world, COVID-19 is about teaching us to create a better world. It's about teaching us to create <laughs> a love world. So are we learning or do we just want to complain? For the little things that is not really uh, as it used to be before. Or can we embrace the new normal and make it a wonderful thing that is happening to us? And be grateful and be really, um, how do you say it? Capturing that every moment because that's life is. Live our life meaningfully because at the end of the day we will ask have we made contribution to the world have we loved enough have we make this world a better place and that 
we learn from the model of the world that we get from the first school that we are in that is the school actually from our parents and that's why parenting is so important so with that thank you very much ibu rose for such a passionate and uh, uh, impactful uh, presentation for today i hope that uh, uh, all of you my friends who are here uh, watching this interview you gain something that is valuable for yourself and may whatever that you gain from here adds value to your life and especially to the children because when we talk about this pandemic it is affecting us as a family unit so that's why this topic is uh, critical for all of us uh, here whether the family is between you and your spouse or your family involves little children as well uh, it uh, Uh, impacts uh, family and that is why we have this topic uh, with respect to parenting so before we end i would just like to uh, announce uh, our session for tomorrow tomorrow we'll be meeting at three in the afternoon malaysian time it will be three in the afternoon malaysian time uh, we'll be having uh, our guest for tomorrow uh, is uh, dato farida hanim harun or Uh, more fondly known as Ibu Hanim, the president of NM's Leadership Solutions and Durian Perhat. And uh, she'll be speaking regarding how to sustain business in the new normal. So uh, we are shifting gears again uh, uh, from, from finance uh, today into parenting and tomorrow we'll be going into business sustain sustainability. So if you are in business for yourself uh, or you own your own business, Uh, uh, or you are working in a business that has been uh, in, affected by this pandemic, then you will want to uh, be in the interview tomorrow with uh, Ibu Hanin. Uh, we'll be meeting tomorrow at three o'clock in the afternoon. And till then, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for being here. And I look forward to seeing you uh, in the session uh, tomorrow. So with that, thank you. And uh, take care and may you be safe.